friends, and welcome back to RoomPack's Res Ed Chat. Today we've got something a little bit different for you. Uh, I recently participated in a podcast episode hosted by the folks over at Student Affairs Now. And Student Affairs Now does a comprehensive, all sorts of different topics related to student affairs and higher education over there. And they recently hosted a number of different podcasters from across the space uh, that talk about student affairs related topics. Uh, and we're going to present that episode here within our own stream today. So if you're looking for new podcasts, other sources of content, want to know what other folks are doing in this field, this is going to give you an excellent primer on what's out there. I'll also include in our show notes a link over to the original uh, podcast episode, as well as all the notes on how you can find these podcasts, who hosts them, and other information about them. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to my dear friend Keith Edwards to kick us off. Hello, and welcome to Student Affairs Now. I'm your host, Keith Edwards. Today we have a very special episode as I'm joined by several hosts of Student Affairs related podcasts. We're calling this our podcast jamboree. Student Affairs Now is the premier podcast and online learning community for thousands of us who work in, alongside, or adjacent to the field of higher education and student affairs. We release new episodes every week on Wednesdays. Find out details about this episode or browse our archives at studentaffairsnow.com. Today's episode is a special bonus episode brought to you by Colorado State Online. CSU Online is now offering a fully online Master of Science in Student Affairs to help you succeed as a higher education administrator. As I mentioned, I'm your host, Keith Edwards. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a speaker, consultant, and coach, and you can find out more about me at keithedwards.com. I'm broadcasting from Minneapolis, Minnesota at the, in at the intersections of the ancestral homelands of the Dakota in the Ojibwe peoples. Uh, let's get to this conversation. Today, as a special bonus episode, we're joined by several of our fellow student affairs-related podcast hosts. Uh, we reached out to a big group of people, and to our shocking surprise, so many of you could make it. We had a, just a couple who weren't able to make it, so we've got a very large group, which is great, uh, but we're going to try and move things along and have this really be informative to our listeners and learn about each other uh, and share as good colleagues. So, so excited to learn more and connect with all of you. Uh, like I said, we're going to be a little bit directive. We're going to do uh, an intro here from each podcast about what they're doing and how they're doing it. And then we've got four exciting lightning round questions that will zip around to all of the folks in the group. We've got this organized and ready to go. We're going to kick off uh, with a Kuhuai stories. Go ahead, Grant, tell us all about it. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Grant Walters. I'm the Director of Educational Programs at the Yuku Hawaii Central Office in Columbus, Ohio. Um, been there for about six years now. Um, he, him, his pronouns. Um, so the name of our podcast is pretty self-explanatory, Yuku uh, Hawaii Stories. Um, a lot of what uh, we produce educationally tends to be uh, very formal and structured, lots of question and answer, lots of informative pieces. So the podcast that we designed is very much designed to tell the stories of our members and help them share some of their backgrounds, their pathways to leadership. Um, and we didn't have a lot of ways in which we do that on a pretty regular basis. Uh, we thought about doing a podcast about five or six years ago when I first started and lots of things got in the way of that. So uh, this year we sort of took advantage of um, some of the shifting work responsibilities we had to develop one. Um, so uh, we've had several guests on, Dr. Lewis and Noah and Jerry Kowalski and other folks in our field who are uh, absolute gems have been co-hosts with me. Uh, so um, my job is basically to be the voice and I produce it, but uh, we've been featuring a lot of our members um, who have been sharing lots about their background studies, um, passion work and things like that as well. Um, it's been a lot of fun. We're pretty new. We've only done about four or five episodes now, so we're still learning. Um, I, I think the things that we're particularly proud of is how well it's been uh, it's come together in a short amount of time. Uh, we've learned a lot about recording and uh, producing sort of along the way by trial and error. And so, you know, in a short amount of time, I think we've produced a really nice little program. So uh, we're excited. We're on a little bit of a hiatus right now with a lot of programming going on, um, but we're hoping to do more uh, very shortly and uh, pretty excited to, uh, to see where it goes. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. Well, welcome to the podcast universe, Grant. Uh, new thanks. episodes, and uh, really glad to have you here and, and sharing this and hearing what you're learning as we go. Let's go over to uh, Dr. Alexandra with ASCA um, Student Conduct. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. So like you said, my name is Dr. Alexandra E. Hughes. I go by Alexandra. My students call me like Dr. Beyonce, which I'm totally okay with. So, you I know, that's that a too. Too. I, you know, that's kind of my, my spiel. Um, again, so excited to be here. So I am the current host of the ASCA Viewpoints podcast, which is the podcast where we talk all things student conduct in higher education. Um, let's see, during the day, right by night, I'm a podcast host. During the day, I'm actually the education specialist for ASCA, so the Association for Student Conduct Administration. I have thoroughly enjoyed working with them. So how that actually started is because Jill Creighton, Dr. Creighton, who's on here, who's actually, she's a host of another podcast, was the original person who kind of uh, founded or started this podcast, to say the least. Um, and so she had this vision many years ago, really uh, looking at featuring just voices in our field. As we all know, we all have different perspectives, different experiences. And so being able to really get the viewpoints of people, whether you're a president, you know, who's been doing this for many, many years, or you just started out of grad school yesterday, like whatever that is, you have something to contribute. And so we wanted to make sure we could feature that. So I was so fortunate. Um, she was the first host after her, I kind of came on and we've been doing it now for a couple of years, getting in really good episodes. And we've even gone so far as to really just give like tips and tricks and all these things and really just how to handle student conduct because student conduct is hard to say the least. And so that's what we're here to do. Um, I love it. I'm excited. It's so much fun. And just like student conduct, you never know what you're going to get. So I guess it's pretty good that with the podcast, you never know what you're going to get. So yeah, that's ASCA Viewpoints podcast. So everyone should, you know, subscribe and go from there. Check it out. Awesome. So, so, so glad to have you here and your enthusiasm and energy is, is jumping out. Uh, being the dot uh, with the, the stage name, Dr. Stacy. Go ahead, Dr. Stacy. Hey, everybody. I'm Dr. Stacy Pearson Wharton. Uh, she, her, her pronouns. I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of Health and Wellness and Director of the Counseling Center at Susquehanna University by day. Um, and then one of my side hustles is I actually host a podcast called Being the Dot. And Being the Dot is uh, I have the opportunity to interview um, Black, Brown, Yellow, and Red people who are thriving in predominantly white spaces. And it really, I would probably call it a higher ed adjacent mm -hmm. um, um, podcast more so than a podcast because I've interviewed golfers and chess players and uh, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And part of my goal is to really try to build a playbook to help uh, BIPOC folks not just survive in predominantly white environments, but thrive. Awesome. About 39 episodes in and with about um, close to 6,000 downloads. Wonderful. So it's been a good, it's my pandemic passion project. <laughs> right. And we've already heard this from several folks from Grant too, wanting to, in this pandemic, way to reach members, uh, gathering in person, not as, not as possible. So other ways to, to reach folks and learning and professional development. Let's go to higher ed geek, Dustin. You might be the 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 most veteran among us. I, I might be wrong about this, but I think you have had the longest running podcast. I think I was a guest on in like 2015 or something like that. Tell us about your podcast and where it started and where it's evolving to. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, happy to be here, and I'll clarify because I've hosted two different podcasts: uh, Student Affairs Collective podcast back in the day. Um, and now the Hired Geek podcast. So collectively, it's been, uh, yeah, maybe seven years uh, of podcasting. But um, yeah, I just love it, love the medium. So yeah, my name is uh, Dustin Ramsdell. Uh, coming to uh, coming to everybody from uh, Delaware today. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, and I'm the host of the Hired Geek podcast. Uh, we get geeky about things like ed tech uh, policy and new innovative practices in higher ed and uh, things like uh, digital student engagement. And all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, and we've been going for over 100 episodes. Uh, I'm just really proud of, uh, you know, a lot of things with it. It is kind of, uh, I know for a lot of folks uh, with these podcasts, kind of a passion project. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of diversity of guests and topics. Uh, like some recent ones are on helping students find scholarships. Uh, some folks that are you know, doing some grassroots efforts there, uh, international exchange programs, uh, and gap years, which is certainly a very timely topic. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just been a super great learning experience for me, and I know it's been uh, the same for others. And 
yeah, I mean, there's no end in sight. So I just really enjoy uh, connecting with folks and you know, talk to a lot of the folks on uh, this call for uh, various episodes throughout the years. But uh, yeah, really grateful to be here. Awesome. Well, thanks to leading the way and uh, giving us all something to, to follow and inspire to. Appreciate that. Uh, Josie and the podcast. Josie, tell us about what you're doing. Hi, y'all. Um, Josie Alquist here, logging in from Los Angeles. I use she, her pronouns. And I am the Josie of uh, Josie and the podcast, which started in 2016. Um, I uh, work to connect technology and leadership in higher education. And really what that means is humanizing how we use technology, through emotion and empathy and authenticity. So I feature leaders from campus presidents to digital strategists and student affairs professionals who are doing the work um, so we can make meaning of tools and not just have them as busy work. And the podcast is on a little bit of a pause as I've been doing lots of other digital communication tools like uh, webinars and community building, but I absolutely love to be reconnected with podcasting crew like I am here with today. So thanks for having me. And you had a book birthday yesterday. I did. Oh yeah. The book. Well, what's interesting too, is the podcast was the research for the book. I know we're going to talk about resources later, but take those interviews and put them out in other ways. Audio waves are amazing, but I transcribed all my interviews and it was fuel for the book. And I did not realize that when I started the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, thank you. And thank you for the, the celebration. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Michelle, tell us about Latinx Intelligentsia. Hola, everyone. I'm Dr. Michelle Espino Lira, Associate Professor in the Higher Education, Student Affairs, and International Education Policy Program at the University of Maryland College Park, which is on the lands of the Piscataway and Anacostan in the the touch tank people. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers, and um, and ella. And um, my podcast focuses on uplifting Latinx, Latina, Latino uh, communities in higher education. We um, interview students and faculty, administrators, policymakers, and community leaders um, to talk about how we don't just survive higher education, but we can thrive through it. And one of the things that I love. Um, offering, we started in August of 2019 and really inspired, um, shout out uh, to Scholar T, because I, I think like I, I had been thinking about doing this as a blog and realized I really love podcasts and Scholar T is what inspired me. Um, and so we are now in season five of our podcast, um, have Logo 2.0, so excited to showcase that and unveil it this year. Um, and we have two segments. We have a poet in residence and in resistencia, who was Sarah Gonzalez, who worked with uh, youth poets in Tucson, Arizona, before moving to Detroit. And now we um, have Cecilia Caballero, who is uh, a doctoral student in American Studies and Ethnic Studies at University of Southern California, who's also part of the Chicana Mother Work uh, Collective. They also had a podcast. And so she's bringing uh, exceptional poetry that focuses on mothering and parenthood. Um, and then I also have the academic hype team that is hyping up uh, academic work out there. So if you ever wanna nominate uh, Latinx, Latina, Latino scholar practitioner, faculty member, policymaker who's doing good work and needs some hype, uh, believe the hype with these folks because they are the ones that are doing it for us. Um, and then finally, just as something that I'm really, really proud of is um, our podcasts are getting out there as public scholarship. And so uh, this is something that we're really advocating for. I'm really glad that my chair, William Liu, is really supportive of my podcast. Um, and it, so is my College of Ed. And so in our promotion and tenure um, podcast and other kinds of creative work is being seen as public scholarship. And that is just so vital um, to give credit, especially for communities of color who are advocating for our people in higher education. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great way to reach uh, different audiences or reach the same audiences in different ways. We were talking this morning about I can read a book and then talk, discuss with the author, and it's a completely different experience, a tone, a context, a personal connection. It's awesome. Awesome. So thanks for, for joining us today. Uh, we got two NASPA connected uh, podcasts. Uh, so let's start with NASPA Leadership. Uh, Dr. V. 
Hello, friends, and thanks for letting me join you all today. Uh, my name is Dr. V. Chanu. Uh, I use he, him, his pronouns, and I am an assistant professor of organizational and community leadership at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Uh, I'm here representing the NASPA Student Leadership Program's Knowledge Community Podcast. Uh, this is a podcast that I co-host with Kathy Guthrie and Cameron Betty, uh, both of whom are faculty in the higher education program at Florida State University. Uh, this season on the NASPA SLPKC podcast, we are trying to amplify the voices of people who are doing work in culturally relevant and socially just leadership education. Uh, the NASPA SLPKC has actually been around for a little while. It really started with uh, Miles Surrett and, and some of his uh, co-conspirators, but over the last year or so, it's sort of fallen into hiatus. And so I am and we are particularly proud of being the force that is bringing it back. Uh, we're super excited about the relaunch and we're hoping that it really turns into something that uh, people can look forward to for years to come. So with that, I'll sort of wrap up my introduction there. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you're able to be here on behalf of your colleagues. Um, we have our next team is the Relay SA team. Uh, our Canadian colleagues, Adam and Nadia, love the concept of this uh, go ahead and tell us about it. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having us. What a treat to be here with everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Kewen. I use he, him, and they, them pronouns. I'm the Director of Student Engagement at the University of Toronto in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. My name is Nadia Rosewan. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Assistant Dean of Co-Curricular Engagement and Student Leadership at University of Toronto Scarborough Campus. And we are the co-hosts of Relay SA, which started in 2016. And it is a relay-based podcast. So every person we interview, the very last question we ask them is, who should we interview next? And that kind of creates the, the roster of people that we uh, hit up to try to interview. And it is, uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, we have a number of relays on the go. Um, and we try to have uh, folks from across Canada in lots of different functional areas, institution types, identities, and social locations. Um, and... I think uh, Natty and I always just say it's our best PD. Doing this, totally. <laughs> doing this podcast is our best totally. PD because we get to interview and have one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one time with some pretty incredible colleagues. Um, I don't know if you'd agree with this, Nadia, but I think my favorite or proudest moment was the Relay SA Live that we did at uh, yeah, the caucus totally. conference. The Canadian Association of College uh, and University Student Services Conference, we did a Relay Live. So every person, we brought up and interviewed and recorded it. And then they reached into a jar yeah. to pull out a name of who we were going to interview next. And so we created unscripted. that as a, <laughs> unscripted, uh, but it was a very rich uh, and compelling conversation um, talking about uh, lots of the important issues that are taking place on our campuses in Canada. Awesome. Well, uh, I thought I love the idea of having this guest suggest the next guest and, and why and give you the intro. I didn't know you had done it live and drawing out of a hat. That's uh that sounds like some podcast high high wire acts. So good for you. You're very brave. Uh, Room packs, res that chat. Uh, Paul, tell us about what you're doing. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm also happy to see all these like fancy microphones and beautiful voices that sound so you know enriching from all these other podcasters. Um, you can always tell a podcaster because they're the one that comes in with the fancy mic to the Zoom meeting. But uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Brown. Uh, I use he him pronouns. Uh, I work as an independent speaker and consultant, but my full-time job is working for a software company called Roompact, which makes Residence Life and Education software. And so um, that's kind of where this podcast came to be. Um, we were thinking about ways of engaging not only just the people that use our software, but really anyone in kind of the residence life, residential education, student learning kind of sphere. And that's kind of how we came to be with this podcast. Now, at the time we were talking about it, there wasn't really another res ed housing related podcast, but Akuhawai beat us to the punch by launching in, in March. We launched a few months later. Um, but I mean, it harkens way back to uh, Jamie and Ed on duty, which is a way old podcast from break drink days, if folks know what that is. Um, but there really hasn't been something focused on that topic uh, since that point. And so uh, we wanted to bring that back. Uh, we also kind of wanted to break the mold a little bit in terms of format. So we call it a digital variety hour. So it could be an interview. It could be a webinar. It could be answering reader questions. It could be any number of things. Um, it can be 20 minutes. It could be 40 minutes. Uh, we try to mix it up uh, and keep it kind of fresh in terms of different formats and, and, and things like that. But really when it comes down to it, uh, it's all about my passion, which is residence life and, and higher education. 
uh, and things of that sort. So uh, Roompact sponsors it, but content could relate to Roompact. It could completely not relate to Roompact. We just want to help res life and, and education professionals uh, do their best work uh, and highlight some of the great things that are going on. Uh, but that's us. That's great. Thanks for, for being here, Paul. And as you point out, one of the benefits of the podcast, there's not a lot of rules, right? Uh, if you're presenting at a conference, it's got to be 50 minutes or 60 minutes with a podcast. This one deserves this. This one deserves this. This one went here. Uh, so there's that flexibility. Uh, our next podcast, The Meeting After the Meeting, has a whole host of hosts. And we only have a few of them here, but we've got four of them here. So I'll let them jump in here and talk about The Meeting After the Meeting. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David Hibbler, Jr., and I use he, him pronouns, and I have the fortunate opportunity of serving as the Associate Director of Residential Education at the University of South Florida on the Tampa campus. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. LaFerre Merriweather. I'm the Associate Director for Residence Life at UNC Greensboro, and my pronouns are she, her. Hello, everybody. Curtis Dugar, I am um, serve as the Director for Residential and Dining Services at East Strasburg University, and I use he, him, his pronouns. Hello, my name is Kiana Stone. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I serve as an Associate Director within the Department of Residential Education at DePaul University in Chicago. Um, a little bit about our podcast. Um, there, we well, Before I start, we are representing part of the crew. We are missing today Bobby Cole, Antonio P, and Brian Johnson. And so for our group, we've kind of grown up within higher education, within specifically our areas of expertise have been housing and residence life, um, and navigated our little circle together as we've um, accomplished doctoral degrees, elevating um, positions, and just navigating adulting 101 as we all <laughs> met each other. I won't say how old we are, <laughs> but moving into that, um, it was a happy accident, thanks to Curtis, of hitting the bat phone, if you will, and pulling us together. And from that, sparked discussion of how we can contribute and give back of how we help to each other when we're having those conversations and how we can give that forward, especially to a profession that has given so much to us. We also found as we have started, some of us started to transition out of higher ed that our topics, our challenges, um, our opportunities cross industry. So from there, we all sit in meetings. We love our jobs and we love meetings, but we all know that there's a meeting after the meeting. So our podcast focuses on navigating that career and community um, and giving voice to the voiceless and you know how we are working, especially right now with the pandemic. How how are we working and doing our jobs and handling all the things that are typically normal um, in a very unnormal time? Awesome. Any more from meeting after the meeting? You're good. Thank you all for being here and for sharing that. We've got two more podcasts to go. Let's go to Jill and NASPA Voices from the Field. Thanks, Keith. And it is so amazing to be in this room with all of you who are sharing the space um, on our podcast journeys. I'm Dr. Jill Creighton. I use she, her, and hers pronouns. Uh, and I host and produce SA Voices from the Field, a NASPA podcast. SA Voices is a show where we feature your student affairs stories from fresh perspectives to seasoned experts. And my goal really is to provide free and accessible professional development. We know that equity and professional development is really challenging, especially amongst budget cuts. And so I'm always trying to bring on folks who, first of all, maybe haven't had a chance to be represented in other spaces, and second, can provide their expertise on a topic from a perspective that maybe we haven't heard before. So please join us on our feed uh, to learn all about what's happening this season. We have just launched season five, Our New Reality, and we're focusing on all of the things that have changed in the last 18 months and how that's affecting our practice. I can see at least three people on this uh, recording today who have also been voices on the show, and I welcome all of you to join us as well. Uh, we are also produced by Dr. Chris Lewis, he, him, his. Dr. Lewis is also the founder of the Student Affairs 
Affairs, uh, KC and NASPA for Academic Student Affairs Partnership. Um, so he's the amazing audio engineer behind the scenes. And the original host of Essay Voices from the Field was Dr. Corliss Bennett, who is out uh, on the West Coast in California. Mm -hmm. So we are rolling and we are about to celebrate our 100th episode as well. So that's coming wow. up episode six of this season. Wow, congratulations. Uh, thanks for being here. And our, our last one already got a shout out and a mention, but let's bring in Scholar T and Shauna. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shauna Patterson Stevens. She, her, hers, and I serve as the Chief Diversity Officer at Central Michigan University. My co host is Dr. Cameron Beatty. He's an assistant professor at Florida State University in higher education. And honestly, uh, Scholar T came together because we like to key key. Uh, Cameron is my chosen family. And we often come together to just talk about different things that are going on in our life. Um, because we're both in higher education, of course, we'd be remiss to talk about the things that are happening in higher education. And so most recently at an ASH conference, we came together again to, to spill some tea. And we decided, well, we should make this more of a platform, something that's open to people who are also experiencing the same things that we're observing. Uh, and so we decided to create Scholar Tea, which is a higher ed pop higher ed podcast for the culture. It's a cultural uh, mashup of humor and tips and scholar interviews. We talk about uh, contemporary issues in higher education, uh, but we're centering the voices of marginalized individuals in higher education, which is really, really important to us. Um, hopefully we can get together again soon. Um, like Dr. Espino mentioned earlier, uh, we're really proud of making sure that literature, uh, theory, different methodologies are made legible and accessible to the public. And you know, COVID-19 threw us off a little Little bit, but we're coming back. We're really proud of the fact that we've still been be, we've been able to create content in the midst of everything that's been happening. So um, take a look at our our most recent um, offerings for Women's History Month, and uh, we look forward to publishing a new season soon. Yeah, great. Thanks so much, uh, Shauna. And the, the the I want to go back to uh, Jill. Go back. I think you wanted to add one more thing. Yeah, I forgot to mention my day gig, and I want to make sure that gets out in space too. Uh, I spend my days at Washington State University in the Inland Pacific Northwest, serving in the role of Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students and Deputy Title IX Coordinator. That's a lot of titles, Jill. That's a lot of titles. Uh, the thing that, that I'm hearing with all of these is passion projects, and then you want it to be more of service, right? This is what I care about. This is what we're invested in. This is what we were talking about. And we wanted to reach more people. We wanted to invite more voices. We wanted to broaden the conversation. We wanted to get it out. Or we were having these great conversations that others could be of help. And that's certainly the case for Student Affairs Now uh, as well. Uh, I just want folks to know that we've got, we're going to get all these folks links and logos and info in the show notes. It will all be on the webpage. So if you're not tracking all of this as we move very quickly, it will all be there sitting and waiting for you so you can connect with these awesome podcasts and all the cool things they're doing. But now we're going to move into the lightning round. We've got four questions. We've asked, asked each podcast. Uh, so some of the folks who got more than one pe person, we've, we've broken it up a little bit. Four questions, and we're just going to go really quickly. Uh, and the first one is, what's the podcast you listen to most regularly? Shauna, what's the podcast you listen most most regularly? J.ill. J.ill. All right, Jill, how about you? This is so boring, but it's NPR up first. It's not boring. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Uh, David, I'm going to second Dr. Jill's. I do also listen to NPR uh, as well, uh, but my favorite is Crime Junkie. So I'm a huge murder mystery guy. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Paul, what do you listen to? Uh, I'm not trying to play to the host here, but it is in fact student affairs now. Two bonus points to Paul Brown. <laughs> Very well done. Very well done. Uh, it's true. Nadia? Nadia? I like Armchair Expert, and for some additional humor, Los Culturistas is one of my favorites. Oh, I've never even heard of that. Los Culturistas. Awesome. Mm -hmm. V? I'm also on the NPR train. Wait, wait, don't tell me the weekly NPR news quiz. Yes. <laughs> well, in fairness, the NPR does have a whole bunch of podcasts, so I think we're doing okay. Michelle, what do you listen to? Intersectionality Matters with Kimberly Crenshaw. Oh, awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. She drops knowledge all the time. Josie? Well, if you want to feel all the feels, Glennon Doyle came out with a podcast this last year called We Can Do Hard Things. Yeah. Yeah. Dustin, what do you listen to? 
I wanted to go with uh, Future You. Um, it is one, like a lot of ones that people mention, I also listen to pretty regularly, but um, I try not to miss an episode of that one. Awesome, great. Stacy. Therapy for Black Girls by another psychologist who was just doing an amazing job at um, putting mental health and topics related to it to uh, folks is highly accessible and it's amazing. Awesome. Okay. Say that again. It's a table, um, which is a, a, a table for black women about black women um, in faith communities. Awesome, awesome. Alexandra? Ooh, this is so hard. I listen to so many. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, wrongful convictions because I love that. Maybe it's like, you know, with my work. And also I listen to the read. I have to do that for the culture. The read is my favorite, okay? <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, all right. And Grant, what do you listen to? Well, I have to do two. Um, in my after hours life, I'm a music and comedy freelance writer. And so uh, for me, it's Song Exploder and Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll add mine in here. The, the one I listen to most regularly is on Being with Chris Tippett, which is recorded mm. right here in Minneapolis. So I, I love that one. Uh, I said I was going to change the gallery view. So we'll get to gallery view here. Uh, we're going to do another lightning round question. Who is your dream guest? We're going to go in reverse order. Grant, who is your dream guest? It is Michelle Obama. Completely. All right. I think you just like took half the room. There you go. Uh, Alexandra, what's your dream you guest? Took, Who's your dream guest? You took mine. Okay. So I'm going to have to go with Beyonce because I started off with Beyonce. So Dr. I mean, Beyonce. So it has to be Beyonce. There you, there you go. go. Great. Stacy. I'm not ready for your jelly doctor, uh, but I would, I would say that um, in one of my other side hustles is I also am a professional speaker, um, and I have a dream of um, being on the Oprah Winfrey show that doesn't exist anymore as a second life. So my dream guest is Oprah Gayle. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> Dustin, I think you've had everybody be a guest on your show. Who's your dream guest that you haven't gotten yet? Well, yeah, I guess I didn't take it in this room because that's like really, really dream. Like mine is like, uh, I don't know, lower tier, but um, Rachel Carson, Rachel Carlson from Guild. Um, I've just been a fan of Guild and their work and everything. So like, I feel like I'm, I might actually have her on like in the near future, but um, that'll feel like a really nice kind of milestone is um, speaking with her. So. Go for it. Go get it. Josie. So my dream guest, also I think is I can I can get it is Renew Couture. She's the president at the University of Houston. She is the most followed campus president on Twitter by thousands and thousands. Uh, she's such a fun follow and inspirational leader. So go check her out. Good luck. Good luck, Michelle. Oh my gosh, there's so many, but I, I'd love to learn more about Sonia Sotomayor. Mm -hmm. I think it's her journey is amazing. One of the most impressive public speaking things I ever saw was at NASPA. She did her whole talk, shaking mm -hmm. hands with everybody. Yes. If you've ever yes. held a microphone on stage and tried powerful. to keep track of your conversation, I have no idea. And then the 20 secret service agents who freaked everybody out. Yeah. Uh, v, who would you love to get? Uh, I spent the summer reading uh, Cast, The Roots of Our Discontent by Isabella Wilkerson. And so I think that that would be a fascinating conversation to have, especially since we focus on leadership. I would love to hear her thoughts on how we can be better leaders working against uh, intersectional oppression. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Adam? Yeah, so the model for Real ASA can be a bit limited, limiting because people just want to hear from VPs and presidents and directors. Mm. So I'd be really interested in actually getting more grad students and young professionals um, on the roster mm. for our next couple of interviews. Yeah, we've uh, worked in a few uh, undergrad students in some of our conversations. It's been tremendously beneficial to the conversation. So that's great. Um, Paul, dream guest? Uh, I don't have one. I struggle with this because especially if I think of Resin's Life people, I mean, these are people who are very giving of their time and love to talk. So if there's anyone in the field that I want to talk to, <laughs> it's not going to be that hard. So I don't know that I have a dream one because everyone always just steps up. Everybody says yes to Paul Brown. All right. <laughs> Good life lesson. Good to know. Uh, Curtis, who would you love to get? Yes. So, um, so this is a twofer here. So uh, our, our podcast is really story oriented. We love telling, but also listening to stories. So the first person would be Barack Obama, I think, just a phenomenal storyteller. But then Ava DuVernay is probably the person I would love yeah. to have 
ex share stories with us and, and be able to really get, help us understand the dynamics of the stories that we're able to engage with. So those are, th that's our two for right now. That's a good two for. Uh, Jill, who would you like to, who's your dream guest? Trying to stay in the higher ed lane is hard because the dream guests are probably not in the higher ed lane. Uh, but I think uh, for me, there's two. One would be Dr. Jill Biden. Um, I think it's really fascinating to have a first lady who's also a full-time uh, professor. That's really unique for our nation. Uh, and the other is Sandra Oh, because of the chair. I think it would be really fascinating to hear about uh, how she prepared for her role and uh, you know how she decided to portray kind of our profession in pop culture because we've also really never seen that in space before either. Yeah, awesome. Shauna, who's your dream guest? Well, I'm going to copy paste all of the above. <laughs> and in addition, uh, Dr. Julianne Malbo, she uh, is a phenomenal leader in the field uh, and all the things that she's doing for the Black community in particular as an economist is really vital to thinking about what's next for HBCUs in particular. And so I think she'd be a great guest for the next episode. Dr. Malbo. If you hear Just us. putting it out in the universe. Maybe it'll come around. Good luck to all of you. Um, mine would be bell hooks. If I could get bell hooks on, that would be my dream guest right there. Um, let's go to our third lightning round question. Coming back to you, Shauna. What's your uh, number one tip to anyone who's thinking about starting a podcast? What's your number one tip? I have a list, but number one is I uh, have a long-term plan for editing. Uh, we do all of our editing on our own and it's find someone to hire. So have a long-term plan for editing. Yes, we were able to hire a production assistant. It's a game changer. So just a total game changer. Jill, how about you? What's your number one pro tip? Listen to other podcasts. I think you learn so much by learning about what you like to listen to or what you find awkward or where pauses work and they don't work, where you can take space, but also just other people's styles can be really helpful for you developing your own podcasting style. And every time I do that, I remember, stop talking, let the guests talk. <laughs> <laughs> Kiana. Okay, so the meeting after the meeting is kick, it just kicked off season four um, last Monday. So we're really excited about that. And thinking about this, I came up with a formula for the number one tip. Stay, stay, be. Stay relevant, stay relatable, and be strategic. You know, mm -hmm. think, know your audience, know what the trends, anticipate their needs, and you'll stay on top. Awesome, awesome. Paul, pro tips? Uh, resist the urge to pre-plan too much. Uh, sometimes guests are be like, I wanna know all the questions and all the things. And if you go too scripted, yeah. it just loses something along the way. So there, there's, a, there's a balance. You gotta figure out what is, how much is too much and how much is too little, but uh, don't try to over, over plan for, for guests and other, other folks you're interacting with. Mm -hmm. Good one. Nadia? I was going to say to start it, I feel like so many people have good ideas and then it just lives and dies in their brain. So buy your mic, buy your headset and just start recording and start the idea and take it from there. Awesome. What about you, V? Uh, take the amount of work you think you're going to need to do. Multiply by three. That's, <laughs> that's how much you need to start. <laughs> I feel like you could apply that to my to-do list. So that's great uh, life advice there. Good for podcasts and everything else. Michelle? I would say understand your purpose and hold on to it. Don't try to be anything else outside of what that purpose is. Awesome. Jesse? Don't keep it to yourself. Uh, even if you just have the idea, put it out there, whether in a small group or on Twitter. My podcast name was birthed from group think online. Um, and so enjoy that market research process, whether you're just ideating or, or getting ready to push play. I voted for the winner. I was part <laughs> of that group. That was the winner, <laughs> nice. hands down. Dustin, what's your tip? Yeah, mine that I always give people, I've talked to a lot of people over the years, uh, they've been trying to start shows is uh, be consistent, whatever that means to you, but also know that you can redefine that. I used to go weekly all the way back to the Student Affairs Collective days and even into this show, uh, but now I do every other week most of the time, sprinkle in some bonus episodes here and there, but um, that is the idea to like kind of build, you know, following and just kind of build the rhythm and kind of getting uh, all these skills that people are talking about mastered. Uh, it's important to kind of be consistent because I've always done it, everything all myself the entire time, but mm -hmm. uh, being consistent has helped with that. 
Awesome. Dr. Stacy. So I would say get help that I, um, I happen to have a professor on my campus whose area of scholarship is podcasting. And so she and I have partnered uh, with her class. And so I get interns from her class every year. And so they take care of editing and social media and all the things like I, I don't know how to edit. I won't let them teach me. I'm not interested in knowing. No, thank you. Uh, and so, and God bless all of y'all who are doing that. Big up to you, but I'm not that person. And so I think it's really important to really figure out a way to kind of lean into both your strengths, but also gather help where you can for the places that you aren't quite as strong. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and, oh, I lost track. Alexandra, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think my, wow, everyone's given such really good like tips. I think mine would be to be authentically you. And I say that because as a black woman who is um, doing a podcast on student conduct and everything else, there's a lot of issues and things and topics and whatever that may be. But I have to say that I have been very fortunate and it can be very hard, but just be your authentic self and recognize that people are going to accept that I'm the same silly person on and off. It's just who I am. So I think be, be your authentic self. Sometimes I have to split a verb. Making up words, splitting verbs, mm -hmm. all sorts of good all stuff. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. When you're the host, it's your, it's your show. You can do whatever you want. Yes. <laughs> um, Grant, what's your number one tip? Yeah, you know, so pushing this out as a, as a function of our association, I mean, we have a lot of educational initiatives and comms outlets and things. And so it was trying to find a space where this did something that the rest of our repertoire didn't. Uh, so having a vision for that was really, really important. So the podcast had to be different than the other things we do and not replicating it so that people would actually want to go and listen to it. So I think that vision and finding the space for it and what exactly that unique space is, is was, was important to me. Awesome. Well, thank you all. I'll add in uh, for Student Affairs Now, we committed from the very beginning to having transcripts of every episode, uh, both for accessibility and so that people could cite it and go back and quote it in, in papers and other scholarship, because we do see it as scholarly work. And we've used Temi to do our transcripts. Uh, it's relatively cheap. Uh, we drop it in. We do have to fix it. Uh, but a 45 minute podcast takes us about 45 minutes to fix the transcript, which when I did my dissertation interviews, each hour was about four hours of transcribing. So for $12 an episode, that's a heck of a time saving. So that would be my transcripts. Hand. Transcripts also increase accessibility and SEO on your website. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We, we're getting some free consultation right here. Free consultation Dissertation advice. Make sure you like pay for it to have it transcribed. Don't, don't do that yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. We've got our last question uh, for folks who watch Student Affairs Now or listen. Uh, same question as we always do. The podcast is called Student Affairs Now. What's something you're thinking about now? Might be related to the conversation. Might be an upcoming episode you're super excited about. Might, might be just something that's heavy on your heart at this moment. Uh, so real quickly, what are you pondering, troubling, thinking about, or something you're really excited about? Uh, we're going to go to Grant. Yeah, uh, several things. And so uh, certainly within our association, our members are dealing with the realities of work and how it's shifting and morphing and changing. And I know that's the same everywhere in student affairs, uh, certainly anti-racist practices and helping to disassemble those things and how white colleagues can do that. Um, so those are topics that I think we're trying to tackle um, specifically. But two episodes we have coming up, uh, we have our uh, Women in Housing Network that is going to be doing an episode who do fantastic work in our association. And uh, we're also going to be doing an episode with Barbara Pansiri, who's the Director of Student Welfare at the University of Botswana. Uh, Aku Hawaii has a South African chapter um, that does amazing work. And they've been experiencing the world and the pandemic very differently than us. And so uh, Barbara actually just came to the U.S. to do a, master, a doctoral degree at Bowling Green State. Uh, so I get to chat with her and she's local now. So that's kind of fun. Uh, but I'm lo really looking forward to those and seeing where they go. Awesome. Alexandra? 
Yeah, um, just to tack on to that, um, I agree with what you're saying. You know, looking at anti-racist work and what we're doing is something that we've definitely, I've definitely tackled a lot on in our podcast. I'm always just really excited for those. Um, but I think my episode that I'm excited about for right now is actually one um, where we're getting into the philosophies of student conduct. You know, there's this great exodus happening from higher ed, unfortunately. And so there's a lot of new professionals who are coming in, especially in the student conduct field, who don't necessarily understand, you know, the process or the philosophy philosophy or even like sanction all those like unfun things so really getting people to understand and then breaking it down and something that you know our association may have charged for in the past right that that PD right but now it's like hey these are the things that you can think about these are the things that will help so I'm really excited for that awesome Stacy so um at the end of every episode I always ask every guest uh, what's the one thing that white people can do to make the world more inclusive? Um, and there have been varying reactions to it, but nevertheless, the question has been asked. And so one of the episodes that's coming in, we're on hiatus right now, coming back in October, um, we're putting together all of that copy to be an episode. And so mm. I'm excited oh, wow. um, to, to kind wow. of understand that a little bit better. Um, so that's something I'm excited about. I love it. it uh, repurposing and repackaging things in different formats to be really valuable. That's awesome. Uh, Dustin, what's uh, what's with you right now? Yeah, I mean, in terms of looking forward to future episodes, I try to keep a pretty good runway of episodes. So um, one that I'm uh, hoping to schedule very soon as of the recording of this episode uh, is with Mentor Collective. Um, so I've been a huge fan of their work. And I think it's something that, you know, just a lot of the things that we're talking about is just the model that they have to connect people with high quality mentors at their uh, various institutions can really uh, just be highly impactful and create some really great outcomes. So I'm excited to explore their work uh, in a future episode. Great. Josie? Uh, my podcast is entering a new phase. And so I'm looking just as, at its ethos and, and purpose. Um, it's not just connecting tech and leadership. At the beginning in 2016, when it came out, it was really like, hey, Instagram can be a place to have an impact and make meaning. Um, we are rebuilding what it means to be a leader. Um, and you could call that a reckoning, um, a, a redefinition. And so we need to have real, real conversations about access and emotion and empathy that may have been gaps that we so glaringly saw during this period of time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm excited in the future to bring that back um, and not just the, the tools and strategy and tactics that um, we talked about in the past. Great, Michelle? Well, as a faculty member, I just want to give a shout out to all of the student affairs practitioners who've had to do case management for the past 18 months. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, the extraordinary work that you have done to keep students safe, um, mm -hmm. I don't think you get enough credit for that work. And so I just want to give everybody a shout out for doing that. Um, I have a couple of episodes that are coming up I'm really excited about. We're going to delve into critical quant um, and look at some amazing scholars who are doing uh, good work with crit critical quantitative methodologies. And then we're also going to investigate the carceral state and um, and talk with scholars who are doing work for formerly incarcerated students and students who are system impacted. So super excited about the episodes coming up. Terrific. How about you, V? In just a few episodes, we're going to release a conversation with Julie Owen, uh, Danielle Reynolds, and Brittany Devies uh, on their work on feminist issues and leadership. And I'm particularly excited about that episode because uh, prior to the hiatus, Julie was the last guest. Uh, and so to be able to bring her back and as part of the relaunch season, I think creates a really nice bookend and in not so subtle a fashion, kind of uh, creates a good pre-post study of where this work was and where it has come uh, in a very short period of time. And I think that that which comes across really clearly in imminently practical ways. And so I'm really excited to get that out uh, into the world for people to be able to hear and use. Awesome. Adam. Yeah, we're um, on hiatus as well. We've been uh, but very much looking forward to uh, picking up some interviews with folks. I mean, our podcast really focuses on kind of the like, lived experience of folks in student affairs roles. And I, I don't think we can continue without really delving into um, how the pandemic has impacted the lives of our colleagues. Um, and we know that it's disproportionately affected some of our others. So I really want to um, mm -hmm. spend some time thinking about that and talking about that. Yeah, great. Paul? Yeah, those who uh, know me know that I love work talking about residential curriculum, curricular approaches, use of 
uh, promoting student learning in, uh, in residence life and uh, student affairs spaces. And there are a number of great folks producing some amazing dissertations on the topic that are coming out like rapid fire. Um, finally, there's kind of that, I think something broke and now everyone's talking about it uh, in a deeper way. And so I've got a number of those coming up, uh, folks talking about their research. A uh, little biased, I'm on a few of their dissertation committees, but uh, I think it's pretty good. That's great, that's great. LaFerrin. Yeah, so as Kiana mentioned, we're in season four, and one of the things that we're talking about that I'm really excited about is wellness, but not in this cookie cutter way of wellness. For me, as I they hear me say all the time, this fallacy of this idea of wellness that we have adopted in student affairs and higher education, um, and so we're really going to delve into that and how, what are the systematic structures that enforce this concept of this fallacy of wellness, and so I'm super excited about it. Um, and what's going to come out of it. And we're going to have some guests and some counselors and therapists, because all of us got therapists. Um, and what does that look like for us um, um, in this work? Awesome. Jill. Uh, there's two I want to talk about. The first one is an upcoming episode that we just recorded this week. It's a crossover with the podcast Pivoting Out of EDU. And we had a really blunt and important dialogue about why there is attrition in the field right now and how the great resignation is affecting student affairs and more particularly what higher education can be doing to retain our talent. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a really good conversation coming up. Uh, but if you go back and listen to any episode of Essay Voices, I am so proud of the work we did for our season finale for season four. It was a two part series on reflecting on the aftermath of the Kent State shootings. Uh, that happened in the 1970s. And I had the privilege of working with Dr. Erica Eckert, who's doing just hours and hours and hours of qualitative research on the history. That's part one about kind of laying out the actual facts of the day, because I think we don't have that correct in our memories in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the second part of that episode is I got to interview the original student affairs administrators who responded to the aftermath of Kent, Kent State in 1970. That was an incredible conversation. Most of them are in their 80s at this point in time, and they were talking about everything on, you know, how to get students to buses, to how to make a residence hall safe, to mimeographing thousands of pages, telling students where they should go, setting up a rumor mill uh, kind of location, because, you know, social media, cell phones, email, mm -hmm. none of that existed. So thinking about crisis management then was extraordinarily intense and uh, just one of the best conversations I've ever gotten to have as a podcaster. That's awesome. Shauna, bring us home. Well, our underlying theme for this upcoming season is decolonizing pedagogy and praxis. And so um, we're looking at how higher education is deeply tied to other infrastructures within the U.S. Um, system. And one episode that I'm actually really excited about is with Dr. Heather Shotton. And we're talking about the ways that we break down understandings of learning and knowledge creation through creativity. Um, and again, a wellness response to what it means to create knowledge in higher education as marginalized individuals. Really excited about that. Uh, fangirled a little bit, told some corny jokes. And uh, I think it's going to be a great season overall. But that particular episode really fed me that day. That is awesome. Well, thanks all of you for sharing so much. This has been terrific. Thanks to each of you for all of your hard work, your guidance, your leadership for paving the way uh, on your podcast and for taking the time to join us today on Student Affairs Now. Thanks to our sponsor for the special bonus episode, Colorado State Online. Colorado State University Online is now offering a fully online Master of Science in Student Affairs. This program will help you gain the professional competencies, knowledge, and experience to succeed as a higher education administrator. You will earn the same master's degree and learn from the same faculty as CSU's on-campus students. Learn more at online.colostate.edu. Huge shout out to Nat Ambrosi, the production assistant who makes us all look and sound good. If you're listening today and not already receiving our newsletter, please visit studentaffairsnow.com, scroll to the bottom and subscribe there to get our update each Wednesday. I'm your host, Keith Edwards. Thanks again to the fabulous guests, all 15 or 20, I've lost count of you today, who made this all work in this wonderful fashion. Thank you all so much. We will see you all very soon. Make it a great day.